What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got an unboxing of about $6,000 in books. I recommend sticking around for this one because one of the books in here will now be the oldest comic in my collection, and it's a cool one, so stay tuned. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So like I said, I've got about $6,000 in comics in these two boxes. Uh, there should be four books, I believe, in one of the boxes and one book in the other one. And one of them is now the oldest comic book that's in my collection. Not necessarily the oldest book, but the oldest comic book. And so if you've got some old comic books in your collection, let me know in the comments. Are there what's what's the oldest one that that you have? Are there certain ones that you're looking to get? Certain time periods you're looking to get? Me, I've been really trying to get a few books back into the 30s because it is so hard to find those books when they get pre 1940. I mean, even during World War II, that's tough, but pre 1940, extremely difficult. And that's what one of these is. And as part of this, I thought I would also show what my previous oldest books were and so I'll go over just a couple of the, the books in my collection. So with that first one I'm going to go over is uh, this book here and this is not the new oldest book. This is a, just a, a key book, a Marvel book from the Silver Age that I was excited to be able to, to pick up. Uh, I actually just bought another copy of this book uh, that should be arriving probably sometime soon. Um, it, I don't know. It's just it's, I think it's always strange how that how that works out. How you I, I hadn't had a copy in quite some time, and then I end up picking up two of them. Um, but just the way it works sometimes. And uh, like I've mentioned before, what I like to do is if I see a book that I think is a good price, I, I buy it, and I don't worry if I have a copy already or recently bought a copy or or whatever. Um, if I think it's a good price, I will I will pick it up. And this is from a seller that I've, I've mentioned a number of times before because I've had some people uh, comment uh, kind of asking, you know, where I buy books from, that kind of thing. And I don't want to give away where I buy everything, uh, but I do tell occasionally where there, there's some that I buy from. And that's part of the fun is finding places where you can buy books. Uh, but this is from uh, Superworld Comics. And uh, just because I've, I've mentioned them on a few different occasions, and they have uh, sales that they do on Instagram a couple times a week. And that was where I picked up this one. It was on their, I think it was like their Tuesday evening sale. Um, but uh, this is a book that I, I'm actually, I'm surprised it's cooled off a little bit because I think it is a, what it is one of, one of my type of spec books where it's a, it's a, a big key and I, there's the potential that it's going to have uh, more impact in the future in the Marvel type universe. And it's just, it's one of those books that you can never really go wrong with it. I mean, you can always pay too much, but you can never really go wrong with a book like this. And this is Amazing Spider-Man number six. And this is the first appearance of the lizard. And obviously it's, it's a lower grade. It's a 2.5, but it's still, it's the first appearance of the lizard. You've got a complete picture on the front, complete on the back. And so that's one of the things I like with lower grade books. I, when I look for lower grade books, when I pick those up, I like the ones that don't have big pieces out of the cover, you know, like whether it's down here or up here or the back, generally okay, because it's not being really displayed from there, but especially on the front. And this one, you can just tell it's got, it's got creases, lots of general wear, but colors still look solid and just still looks like a it's, a, it's a nice presenting copy. And one thing I've always thought was really interesting with this book is, is the color for Amazing Spider-Man. It's this pink color, and it's just one that you don't see very often with Amazing Spider-Man, not in the Silver Age or any, any age, and so I thought that's always kind of a cool color. And the other thing with this book is that this was one of the books that I had always wanted when I was a kid. I, I have a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 44, which is Lizard's second appearance that I bought when I was a little kid. I've always had it, but I could never get that first appearance. I've had this one other time. I think it was like a 5.5, five, something like that. 
Uh, but I sold that one a while ago and this one came up for sale, picked it up from Superworld, thought it was a good price. And just the reason I think this is a good book, it, especially right now, is that it seems like the lizard could be one of the villains that's part of the next Sinister Six with uh, the next Spider-Man movie. One of the dark scenes where you see kind of like a shadowy character, there's some speculation that it's a lizard. And we've been seeing the prices of this book drop some after that. And I think anything that's gonna end up being a character that could have some type of impact there is a, a good book to buy. And first 10 issues of Spider-Man, one of the big villains in the Spider-Man universe, not a, a bad book to pick up regardless of spec. Now, uh, the books that are in here, there should be four books in here. And <laughs> it, was, it was kind of funny, just when I was checking before this, uh, just, uh, just trying to remind myself what was in this box, I had completely forgotten about one of the books <laughs> that I had bought that's in here. So uh, I, I was thinking there were only three, but there's actually four, and the one that I forgot about is a it is an awesome book. It's almost certainly going to be a, a keeper book for me. Um, so again, I'm going to have some some tough decisions on which books I, I keep and which ones I, I end up selling because I've mentioned this on a number of occasions that I tend to follow a, a rule where I only keep approximately 50 books. And so if I get a new book that I add to that list, it means I have to remove another book. And I'm pretty sure this one uh, is going to be added to that list. I think there's actually two books in here uh, that are going to be added to that list. So it's going to be some some tough uh, tough decisions for me on on which books are going to fall off. Now there's plenty of bubble wrap in here. Everything is packaged well. Okay, so here is here is the first book, and this was the one. This is the one that I forgot about that uh, is likely going to stay on my my keepers list. And I am a big Batman fan. Uh, if you if you've watched my previous videos, uh, my my wall behind me had been Batman for like a month and a half, and I I just updated it to my my favorite horror books uh, for Halloween. So I've got the Startling Terror Tales, Suspense Eleven, Crime Suspense Stories Twenty Two. The uh, what's that over there? Ghost Comics Six, Vampirella One, and then House of Secrets Ninety Two. So uh, I, I changed that up, but it was Batman for for quite a while, and this one is is almost certainly gonna go on that list as well. And this is Batman number twenty three, which is a early uh, classic Joker cover. You know, just one of these these really early covers where you get Joker on there. And I, it's it's kind of a campy cover, which I'm not a huge fan of because it's like they're playing chess on the front. But still, Joker on the cover, big deal. You know, this is 1944, so very early. And the cool thing about this one, I'm, I'm not a, I've mentioned this a number of times, I'm not a page quality person. I buy brittle page books and, and everything. Um, but I mean, this is, this is a white pages copy. <laughs> 1944, early golden age, white pages. I mean, that is... That is pretty crazy, especially since it's all beat up. So it means it was probably in a location that had very good just atmospheric conditions. You know, maybe this was a book that was located in the mountains, something like that. Somebody stored it in the mountains um, or just something that was, you know, very well kept in terms of, of air quality and everything. So uh, this is just cool Joker cover, uh, 1944 and, uh, you know, white pages copy. So... And I don't know if I showed the, the back, but yeah, I mean, it's a 3.0. It's a lower grade copy. There's plenty of flaws on it, but still, again, a complete image, you know, no pieces missing, anything like that. So uh, definitely one that, that I will be likely considering to keep uh, in my, my, with my keepers list. Now, this one, I, I was actually even on the fence about on, being on my keepers list as well, but I just... It, that list was getting a little too big. I can't keep everything, so I will likely end up selling this one. But I picked this up because I am a big L.B. Cole fan, a big L.B. Cole horror fan, the pre-code horror books. And this is just one of the great classic covers for him. It is restored. It's a purple label. And it's just color touch on the cover, but it's moderate to extensive. So it's C4, which means 
I'm guessing there is just a ton of Sharpie on this cover because it's a black cover. And this is Blue Bolt number 115. And this, this is one of the really cool skull covers from the Golden Age. I mean, there's a bunch of them. I mean, like I've mentioned, the uh, Witchcraft number two, Punch Comics 12. Now this is another one that is just this awesome skull cover. And this one's pretty violent too. You know, you've got the bloody hands, the, you know, skeleton fingers and just awesome cover. And you can see up here, this is a uh, moderate to extensive C4 color touch on cover. So C4 means basically there's a lot of color touch on the cover. And because of all the black, I'm just, I'm guessing it's mostly Sharpie. Um, I, I don't really care. There's no way I'm gonna try to have that removed with a, a book that has a C4 um, because that means it's uh, amateur. The C is amateur, four means a lot. And so removing the Sharpie would either mean having to cut out significant parts of the cover and would really degrade the appearance of the book and the actual presentation of this book is, is very nice. Um, and so I am also very happy with, uh, with this book and another just a great book for, uh, for Halloween. You know, I mean, this is, a, this is an awesome Halloween type cover. Now, I'm gonna save this one for the last. So the next book, the third book in here is another, another great Halloween book and I did an unboxing of the first issue that, of this run uh, just recently and did the flip through of it. This is issue number five. So this is Eerie number five, uh, which is another pre-code horror cover. And it's got this mummy on the cover. And one thing, just to make sure that you're aware of, this isn't like a tape stain or anything. This is, this is actually part of, of this book. This is what the cover looks like with this line up at the top. Uh, it just, it kind of looks like it's a tape stain or something, but that's not what it is. Um, but again, low grade copy, but an in general, nice presenting copy, not missing any big pieces or anything. Um, but just a, a cool pre-code horror book, mummy, good girl art type cover. So a couple great elements on it for the golden age. Now, here is the last book. And this is now the oldest comic in my collection and before I before I show this one uh, I'll show what were the oldest comics in my collection and so this had been the oldest book I had this was Action Comics number 19 uh, which this is the first series of consecutive Superman covers so before this uh, you had different types of covers Superman wasn't always on them uh, from this point forward you had consecutive Superman covers and I think it's a it's a cool early Superman book because it's not campy or anything it's a it's a war cover and you can see right up here uh, December 1939 so just barely getting into the 30s with this book and so uh, I thought I just thought that was awesome I don't have any Batman books that get into the 30s uh, but I do have this one Superman into the 30s so December 1939 then uh, maybe just a couple months ago, I picked up this book, which became the oldest book that I had. And this was Mystery Men Comics number four, uh, which is just an incredible, uh, you know, good girl art type cover. Uh, just this guy rushing in to save her from being thrown into a fiery pit. And so just a, a really cool cover. And you got somebody did some math on the back here. Uh, a really cool cover. And this one is November of 1939. So one month earlier, one month before the Action Comics number 19. Um, but this is also one of the books that's on my, kind of like my keepers type list. And now part of that had been because it was the oldest book. So that's, I like keeping the oldest book, but I think this is just an incredible cover, amazing colors. I mean, it's got this chipping up here at the top, uh, but it doesn't really impact the main art, which I like. And so uh, this one, was then the next oldest book. Now the last book I have here is actually the oldest book I own, but I don't really qualify it as a comic. It does show up in Overstreet, so you could kind of say it's a comic, but eh, more, more or less, I'll, I'll show you why I don't think it's, I don't really put it as a comic. And this is Walt Disney's Donald Duck uh, nine, number 978 and so you see that little number down here 978 
And so this is the first dedicated Donald Duck book. And this is from 1935. So you can see the inside here, uh, down in the corner. Uh, you see there, copyright 1935 of Walt Disney Enterprises, Whitman Publishing Company, Racing, Wisconsin. And so the reason I don't normally qualify this one so much as a comic is it doesn't really have the feel of a comic. You can see the interior. It's, it's more like a, a kid's storybook. Um, you've got, you know, Donald. This isn't Mickey or Minnie. It's, it's some younger versions of mice. <laughs> so, uh, but you see this older version of Donald Duck. Uh, this is well before Carl Barks started drawing him. Um, but I thought this is just, it was a cool book that I, that I have. Uh, 1935 but I don't really call this one a comic and so that's why this other book here that I have that I just picked up is now what I would call the oldest comic book that I have now this one is also restored uh, this is I've never bought two restored books in, in one uh, uh, sale before but couldn't turn this one down I just I felt the price was was too good it looks awesome and it is from a very important run of books and this is Detective Comics number seven. And so this is pre-Batman Detective Comics. So Batman was Detective Comics number 27. That's his first appearance. This is about a couple of years before <laughs> Batman is in this book. This is September of 1937. I mean, this is, this is over two years before my previous earliest comic book. And so this one just, it, it crushes the uh, the early comic books for me. And I thought this was a pretty cool cover. You know, you've got these, it's probably like a gangster or something with this uh, Tommy gun on the front and um, just incredible colors on it. You know, really bright reds and, and blues. And I, I've always liked how that old Detective Comics label looks. And I mean, you can see the back it looks real nice, very bright white looking back cover and just, you know, all kinds of detail in these, these ads on the back. Lots of guns for sale. <laughs> so, you know, a lot, of, a lot of guns for sale in Detective Comics. Um, but, but yeah, there's a lot of restoration on this book. It's professional restoration. And so this is an older restored label. So the way, here, let me uh, move some stuff. So with the newer restored labels, like, this blue bolt number 115 they say uh, they have this letter and a number and the letter if it's a uh, means it's professional if it's B means it's like halfway between professional and amateur and if it's C it means it's amateur and then it has a number one through five if it's a small amount to a large amount of restoration one being small five being the large amount of restoration and so these are much more clear about the restoration they list it you know what's up here so small amount of color touch the old cgc labels aren't quite as clear about the volume of restoration and everything like that and so you can see here it says apparent 3.0 which means it's it's restored and then it says moderate p and so the p means professional if you have a a on there it means amateur and so that's one of the things that can get really confusing between the old labels and the new labels is an old label, A means amateur, and the new labels, A means professional. And so this one, you know, P means professional. You can see this is the, uh, the restoration that's on it. Color touch, pieces added, tear seals, cleaned and reinforced. And so I don't know exactly where the pieces are added. I would have to take a look to see where that's been done. It's actually probably pretty hard to find it just because uh, this is a professionally restored book. And so usually from the front, that means you can't actually see or easily see where the pieces were added. You usually need to have it open and take a look from the back. Um, but this one is also, it's, it's Brittle Pages, but again, like I said, I have a White Pages Batman 23 that I picked up and a Brittle Pages Detective Comics 7. I don't really care about the page quality. What I care about with this book is just the, the run that it's from, Detective Comics, how old this is, 1937, and the rarity. There are only, I think, 20 total graded copies between Universal and Restored of this book on the census. And so 
when I had the chance to pick this book up for what I felt was a pretty reasonable price, I, I jumped at it. And so super happy to add this book as the now oldest comic in my collection. And I think it's going to be a pretty hard task to, uh, uh, to, to top that. Um, but yeah, very happy with this book and hope you, you saw you know, at least one book, maybe a couple books today that you've never seen before. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you thought this was useful, fun to watch, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.